Welcome back to my series on turning to faith to cope with crisis. And the videos I've made have mostly talked about people who are at home, dealing with anxiety, dealing with depression, dealing with being at home. And today I wanted to make a video for those of you on the front lines, our hospital workers, medical workers, nurses, doctors, our police and fire department, our government, uh, the grocery store workers, the essential workers, as well as my fellow therapists. These are uniquely challenging times. We have to deal with the stress of the virus as well as deal with working and pushing through and helping others. And I'm not putting myself on par with the nurses and doctors while wow, you guys are at the real front lines. But I know that it, this is uniquely difficult and challenging for all of us. And I wanted to give you an encouraging word to help you push through. You know, you may be exhausted just from working a lot of hours. You may be exhausted from going to work and being stressed and anxious about possibly even getting the virus. You may have compassion fatigue. I know I've struggled with that as um, I've been compassionate on clients and, and therapists and as well as just the world and you just continue to watch the suffering and my empathy is just continuing to grow and grow and then it becomes draining. I don't know about you, but when this first happened, there was almost an adrenaline of wanting to, to rise up and help our community and help my therapist and help my clients. But after week, after week, after week, it's become wearisome. So how do we keep going? How do we keep fighting the good fight? How do we finish the race strong? And the answer is faith. We believe in a God who cares for us, nourishes us, he fills us with his spirit and he can push us through. In Isaiah chapter 55, it says, Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread? in your labor on what does not satisfy. Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and you will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me, listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. And then he goes on and says in verse six, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. God is our refuge and our strength in times of trouble. That's why we go to the Word of God, the well, the bread, and we eat and we fellowship and we connect with God. And this is how He strengthens us through His love letter, through His Word. And we connect with God through prayer, calling out to Him as, as David did when he was in trouble, saying, God, I need your help. This is difficult. And we humble ourselves before the Lord, go to the Lord in prayer and through His Word, and He nourishes us, He energizes us, He strengthens us, and He gives us a perspective about life that we're not going to get anywhere else. Then we can fight the good fight. And so I also wanted to give you some practical tips on getting through this time healthily, getting through this time and being as effective as you can, and getting through this time without anger or bitterness. And if you're serving right now, if you're a nurse, a doctor, therapist, and you're out there serving, that's probably your strength. And usually those who serve, their strength is serving others and their weakness is allowing themselves to be served. And so I just want to encourage you, as I've encouraged my therapist, is, Allow others to minister to you. Humble yourself and ask for help. I often go to my wife just to ask for encouragement. I've gone to my staff and to my friends for prayer. Um, when I'm struggling and I'm just, I'm down, I, I call my friends and they lift me up and they listen to my complaining or they tell me a joke or they help me get perspective. And so this is a time to lean on each other. We are the body of Christ. And also, don't rob others of the blessing that you so enjoy as a servant. 
I know I love to serve and I'm filled up when I serve others, when I pray for others, when I encourage others, what a blessing it is. And when we don't allow people to do that for us, we are robbing them of that blessing. We are the body. We are here to help each other, encourage each other, build each other up. And so be humble. Be honest about your struggles. Be honest about your frustrations. Be honest about your weariness and share that burden with a friend, with a family member, with a pastor, with a therapist. You know, this is an area of weakness for me. I've grown up being very self-reliant, not trusting humans. But God has shown me over and over and over that is not what he wants us to do. He wants us to rely on him and to rely on others and to trust they can help us and care for us. And you know, there are times that people can disappoint you. And so putting your trust in people can be disappointing, but God has called us to trust. God has called us still to reach out. And so sometimes, yeah, you can get disappointed, but we want to continue to reach out to people and ask for their help, ask for their support, ask for their prayers. You know, also we want to guard our resting time. You know, also those who serve usually also just constantly serve everyone else. I remember years ago in my master's degree, I had a very wise teacher and she said something shocking. She looked at all the therapists or pre-therapists and said, you know what, all of you are gonna to have to lose half your friends. We all looked at each other in shock. I'm like, that's crazy. She goes, you're all therapists. You all care about each other. She goes, you know, when you become a therapist and it's your job to minister, to care, to bear other people's burdens, you're not going to be able to just take care of every one of your friends without getting in return. And so she talked about having equal friendships and leaning on other people. And so during this time, it might be time to shut off constantly just giving to everyone and asking and being assertive and explaining what your needs are as well as protecting your rest time. God throughout scripture calls us to rest. It's in the top 10. It says obey the Sabbath, honor the Sabbath. God wants us to rest for a day a week. Physically it makes the most sense, psychologically it makes the most sense. We all perform better when we have breaks. It's been proven. God said that thousands and thousands of years ago, it's better when we have a break, a day off where we can recover, that we can feel better. And God also calls us just to rest in Him. You know, if you look at Jesus in His ministry, He was constantly surrounded by people who were sick or demon-possessed or needed to be healed. And it says, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. He got away from the crowds, even though there was needs. Even though people were calling on him and needing him, he got away with his heavenly father and fellowshiped and prayed and connected so that he could keep ministering. And if the God of the universe, Jesus, needs to do that, I think you do too. I think it's okay to have rest. God calls us to rest. And so I come to work and, and I am doing a lot of video counseling and video supervision and talking to therapists on Zoom. And it's, it's, it's great, but it can be draining and tiring. So I need to go home and rest and enjoy the safety of my home and just let my hair down. And it's okay to do that. So be careful with your resting time. God has called you to rest. Lastly, we need to trust in God's power to do our jobs. You know, God gives us the strength, the abilities, the giftedness to serve in whatever capacity you're serving in. Whether it's a therapist, a nurse, doctor, you're helping with a gas station or putting groceries up, we are to do the power of our job through the power of God. Not leaning our own understanding, leaning our own strength. Because like a bucket, it will just drain. But we need to fill that bucket with God and know it's He who does the work. I love how Paul puts it in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. After all, what is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants to whom you came to believe. 
as the Lord assigned each task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God caused the growth. So neither he who plants or he who waters is anything, but only God who causes growth. We are simply God's servants. God provides the energy and the strength and the ability and the wisdom and the giftedness to do our jobs. And so we go and we do the job as best as we can, but we need to trust God with the result. You know, as a nurse or a doctor, you may do everything you can and someone still may pass away. As a therapist, you, you may give the best advice and listen as best you can and, and, and try and push people in the right direction and they may not go that way. As a business owner, you're trying to help your employees or whatever you're doing, you're trying to help. But you only can do what you can do. The results are in God's hands. And the more we understand that, the more the pressure is on Him and not on us. I know after a counseling session, I've ministered to someone and I've listened and I've prayed and I've cared and I've kind of pushed them in a certain direction. I can know that I've done my job and now it's between them and God. The results are up to God. We are just servants. And God is doing his work through us. And so I'm hoping that this has been helpful. That you can find your strength and hope in the word, in prayer, in trusting in others with fellowship and being careful where you're giving your energy to. And lastly, trusting that God is the battery, the power, the fuel to do whatever work you have to do. For all of you who are working, thank you. Good work. Let's keep it up. God bless.